Biden addressing the nation last night in his first State of the Union address, blaming American companies for skyrocketing inflation, not his own failed policies. The panic also disrupted the global supply chain. Factories close. When that happens, it takes longer to make goods and get them to the warehouses, to the stores, and go, prices go up. One third of all the inflation was because of automobile sales. There weren't enough semiconductors to make all the cars that people wanted to buy. And guess what? Prices of automobiles went way up, especially used vehicles as well. Small businesses and family farmers and ranchers, I need not tell some of my Republican friends from those states. Guess what? You got four basic meatpacking facilities. That's it. You play with them, but you don't get to play at all. And you pay a hell of a lot more. A hell of a lot more because there's only four. Joining me right now is the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, to react to last night's happenings. Mr. President, thanks very much for being with me this morning. Good morning. Let me start off with getting your overall reaction to the State of the Union last night, Mr. President. What struck you most? Well, I thought it was terrible because he didn't talk inflation. He didn't have any ideas for inflation. And most importantly, he didn't talk about energy with oil and what's happened. We were energy independent one year ago. We were exporting energy for the first time ever in the history of our country. We were going to double the size this year. We'd be double the size of Saudi Arabia and Russia combined. Uh, we would have, number one, the event in Ukraine would have never happened if I were president. It would have never happened. There was no way it was happening. If it did happen, let's say it did happen, we'd be yep. exporting oil to everybody, and that would have kept it from happening in itself because Russia wouldn't be making a fortune on oil. So uh, it's crazy what's well, happened. I look at the numbers. They're the highest numbers in years, many years, oil. Yeah. So let's let's talk solutions, because uh, we know that the Saudis have refused a request by this administration to increase production. Oil is the story. Brent and crude topping one hundred and nine dollars a barrel right now. Mr. President, should uh, Joe Biden immediately reopen the moratorium on, on oil and the sector and drilling in the U.S.? What is the solution to getting oil prices lower? Well, of course he should, and uh, I see that Saudi and Saudi Arabia and also OPEC as a whole, uh, they've rejected every single request that they've made. We're like a bunch of fools. We had energy so low. In fact, I was fighting to keep it up. Do you remember it went down to numbers that nobody's ever seen before? We got it back up. We got it to 40 Dollars, and that was good. Everybody could make money, and yet at the same time, we were a dollar eighty-seven at the pump for gasoline. We never had it so good, and we were doubling the size of our companies. Everything was incredible, and then these guys came along, and I saw that you mentioned border a little while ago. They opened the border. Uh, three weeks, they could have finished the wall. The wall was almost complete, and they could have finished the wall, and we had the strongest border we've ever had, and that included not only for people getting through illegally. That also included drugs and uh, trafficking, human trafficking, which is a tremendous problem. We had the best border we've ever had in the history of our country. Now we have the worst, and we have the worst situation in oil that we've ever had. And this is what's causing inflation. You know, if you want to knock inflation or at yeah. least take a big chunk out of it, what you do is lower the hell out of your oil prices, and we could do that. But it's going to take a while to start it up. I mean, the problem is with this gentleman— he really destroyed it, and it's going to take a while to to do it. We had we would have been so, selling to everybody in Europe. We were we were we were uh, hitting it, home run after home run after home run, and then it was just ended, stupidly ended. And now you know they well, the uh, they talk the climate, but the climate we had the best numbers on climate. We had the best air numbers, the best water numbers, mm, cleanest water, cleanest yeah. air in decades. Instead, Mr. President, uh, the administration is actually increasing its imports from Russia. My guests earlier in the show said that they expect oil to go to $150 a barrel, even $200 uh, if uh, sanctions uh, are placed on Russian gas. Should the president put sanctions on the oil sector of Russia? He should open it up in the United States, and he should buy no, no oil whatsoever from Russia. But he should open it up. It'll take a while. That's the problem. We had it there already. And this would have been uh, our country would have made an absolute fortune, more money than it's ever made on this 
situation. Now, the situation itself would have never happened, so we wouldn't have had that problem. But we had low energy costs, and we were it was very abundant. And now they've closed all the leases. They've uh, they've ended uh, exploration. They knocked out Anwar in yeah. Alaska, which could have been bigger than Saudi Arabia. It was going to be among the biggest sites in the world. Could have been as big or bigger than Saudi Arabia. They knocked it out. It took 50 years of uh, people trying to get it approved. Nobody could. Get, Ronald Reagan couldn't get it approved. I got it approved, and they knocked it out in one day. So where do you think oil prices are going, and will that have an impact on the broader economy? What is your take? Well, they're going unlimited right now. You can't even project. It could go anything. It could go unlimited. I, I couldn't believe last night when he said what, that he was going to continue to buy. Uh, oh, yeah. Why? I mean, why not? I mean, you, you won't be able to get it. And OPEC loves it. They're making a fortune. You know, you say Saudi Arabia. Uh, they're making a fortune. Why would they— do anything. They have him over a barrel. The only thing he can do is just say, sorry about it with the climate hoax. Sorry about it. Look, this climate situation is killing our country. And I know it's politically not correct because people don't understand it, and they don't. But I understood it with the best air, the best water, the best everything else, and not destroying our businesses. This is killing our country. Uh, we have China that doesn't partake. We have India that doesn't partake, and we have Russia that don't partake. None of them partake in cleaning the climate. They laugh at us how stupid we are. We clean the climate, and then their air flows to us from Asia, just like all their garbage flows to us through the Pacific Ocean. You ever see what happens in what? Los Angeles where hundreds and thousands of tons of China garbage is floating? The tides bring it right. So we have nice, clean water, wow. and you're not allowed to put your toe in the water— and yet you have 25,000 tons of garbage flowing in from China and other countries in Asia and hitting us on the West Coast. Uh, we are, we are yeah. so foolish. Uh, the, the, the whole thing uh, the, with the climate is uh, just out of control. Unless everybody's going to do it, it makes us non-competitive. And everybody has to do it. That includes China and Russia and India and many other countries. Well, Joe Biden uh, is hoping that China keeps its promises when it comes to climate. And the other day, John Kerry said he hopes that the war in Ukraine doesn't take the focus off of climate for China. Do you think China will keep its promises on climate? Absolutely not, because they don't do that. They see stupid people that they're dealing with, and they just take advantage of it. Uh, you understand what's happening over there. First of all, they're buying the oil from now. They're buying it all from Iran. When I was there, I didn't allow them to buy. They didn't buy anything from Iran because we were ready to make a deal with Iran. Iran was in a bad position. We were ready to make a deal with them. And, and China understood they can't buy or we would not do business with them. They made a fortune off our country, although I took in hundreds of billions of dollars in tariffs and taxes on China. First time anybody ever took in 10 cents. We took in hundreds of billions.